Fleet Street legend Calvin McKenzie is coming up later tonight. But first, I'm joined by former Conservative Minister Anne Widdicombe. And Rishi Sunak attended an EU summit in Granada today to demand European leaders follow Britain's tough action on illegal migration. The Prime Minister will highlight to the European political community his efforts to crack down on small boat crossings in the English Channel. But there's already been tensions between those attending because the Spanish hosts refused to put migration on the official agenda for the meeting, which sums it up, doesn't it? Sums it up. Oh, great, we've gone to Spain. We've got some EU cooperation with a group of people who didn't want to talk about it in the first place. Anne joins me now. Can we count on the support of our European neighbours, Anne? Well, of course we can't, and we've already had solid proof of that. Uh, we had it with France. I mean, we have given France millions. Uh, and what do they do? Absolutely nothing. And, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Uh, and the reason that Rishi Sunak does this and is relying on the EU to sort out Britain's problems is because he has no solution. He has done absolutely nothing. Now, he and Suella have talked a great deal. Um, they've talked about what they're going to do. I mean, I support Rwanda, but, you know, the prime minister doesn't seem to have any means of, of speeding that up. Um, meanwhile, they haven't done what they should have done, which is to get um, the uh, uh, asylum seekers out of hotels and into secure accommodation. Haven't done that. They haven't done any of the deterrent things which would have actually made people less likely to want to come here. They've done none of them. OK. I mean, look, you obviously say yeah, we've tried. I think boat crossings are down 20 percent. I know a lot of people say that's down to the weather. So we'll have to wait and see. But crucially, if you stand on a ticket of stop the boat and there are still boats coming, that's a problem. And they're talking about working with Frontex, which is actually really what Labour want to do uh, as well. So I think he sucked the wind out of their sails a little bit ahead of their Labour Party conference. But forgive me, Anne, you want to work with an organisation to help share intelligence they aren't cracking down on human traffickers either. So what's going to change? Nothing. Absolutely nothing is going to change. Uh, and to suggest that he's taken the wind out of Starmer's sails, well, frankly, no, because the public won't be any more impressed by Starmer uh, talking about relying on France and cooperation with the EU uh, than they are with Rishi doing it. I don't know why he is wasting his time. He should be doing one thing, and he should be saying... How do we deter people from coming? And the only way you're going to do that is through a mm. combination of automatic detention, offshore processing, mm. uh, and the removal of the ability oh. to claim asylum if you come illegally. Or, or you could also be honest about something, which is that if you do come to this country and you do have a procession of lawyers who are willing to, in some cases, lie about the calibre of your asylum claim, and we do find it difficult to deport you, once you get accepted, you'll have 28 days to leave this hotel and then you will be homeless because we don't have any homes. So if you want to live on the streets of Britain, then come. But if you don't, maybe France starts to look all right again, Em. Uh, I don't actually think that that would work. I mean, I think they would find ways around that. I mean, after all, how is it that they come here and they disappear when their claim is about to be refused? Mm. But they manage to keep themselves, they manage to work, they go into the underground economy. I don't think that is is the solution. I think the solution is deter them, to deter them from coming in the first place. And the other solution, of course, uh, is to make some effort to actually turn back the boats, which yeah. is what Australia. We don't do takes, that. But it takes it takes someone who's very brave, and because you know, look, you're one death away from all of the headline all of the headlines being you know you're a murderer and you're this that and the other and again you know that doesn't curry much favor with me i don't want to see anyone die in the channel of course not but then you have to think well are we the murderers for turning the boats back if somebody does happen to unfortunately die or is that the human traffickers is that the people who've willingly gone across the busiest shipping lane in the world it's an unpalatable thing to say but no politician wants to be the person who is accused of killing people in the channel do they no, and nor will I. Uh, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that the Navy should, you know, force the boats back and nudge them back in, into French waters. Uh, I'm saying that they should do what they would do with any other boat illegally entering our waters, which is to stop them, mm. turn them round and back. 
OK? That's and the we've just about got time, just about got time for another little one with you, OK? So the Governor of the Bank of England has championed the opportunities created by Brexit, saying it has protected Britain from global economic headwinds. Andrew Bailey suggested Britain has fought off pretty dire warnings from economists and so-called experts after leaving the European Union. So does this prove that those doom-mongering Remainer economists and so-called experts were wrong at? Oh, yes, and Andrew Bailey was pretty doom-mongering himself. You know, he's never been a great proponent of Brexit. Uh, so if he's saying that it's opened up opportunities, it's going to be very difficult now for the miseries to go on saying that, that we should rejoin and we should abandon it. It has been uh, a limited success because it hasn't been properly embraced and dealt with. But if we take those advantages and if we trust people like Bailey, if we take those advantages, then yes, you know, we have a huge advantage. future ahead. I, I but you, and why, 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 why we've... Why we've never sought capacitive advantage, Anne, is, is the thing. And the reason I'm cutting across you, I'm very sorry, is because we are bang out of time. Is the wonderful Anne Widdicombe there.